Hey you good. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. On today, this is going to be like short, sweet, simple, straight to the point because I have to get ready and go to work. So, I'm coming to you guys because I want to go ahead and upload one of my budgeting videos for you guys. But this is going to be a two-in-one combo for you guys. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys like it. So, on this video, I'm going to mention to you guys the 50, 20, 30 rule. And then I'm also, since I'm going out of town on the 20th of this month for holidays, I want to show you guys how I prepare to uh, travel on a budget or just tell you guys how I travel on a budget. Um, also, I might put out a couple of videos while I'm in Chicago. I'm not sure yet. But I probably will. It depends on how the Wi-Fi is up there. But let's go ahead and get into this video. Um, me telling you guys how I'm preparing to travel on the budget. Um, <clears throat> this is more of... I know most of you guys probably wish you could do a lot. Um, you could do more... Then just travel on vacation. You only spend a lot of money. But yet when you come home. You want to have a lot of money in your pocket. Okay. Um, the best way to do that. Is like plan ahead. What I mean by plan ahead. Don't wait for everything to like. Um, don't wait for everything. To be like so expensive. Um, you do have places. That have the early bird special. And this basically if you want to go ahead and get like tickets or if you want to go ahead and get like hotel rooms or Airbnbs and all of that. Um, which lead me to my next one. You can always find a cheap hotel. Um, but I never stay in hotels. I either stay in Airbnb or I go find me an inn or a suite. And you got, most of you guys might be saying that an inn in the suite is kind of expensive, which it is, but I always use, and I'm going to put this in the comment section. Will I put it in the comment section? No, the description bar, I'm going to put in there this website you guys can use that I always give you like um, cheap hotels, inn, suites, however your budget goes, just put it into hotels.com. And then tell them where you're going, where you want to come back, and all that stuff. And they'll just calculate it all together. And there's other hotel websites you can use that calculate your airplane, your cars, hotels, and all of that stuff in for you. But uh, I try to stay far away from airplanes as possible. Unless either my family member is buying me an airplane ticket or something like that. <clears throat> um... But when it comes to hotels, um, sometimes you have what they call hidden fees. If you guys didn't know, they have unnecessary costs like taxes, um, tourist taxes. Also, they have like internet where you have to pay for internet, Wi-Fi, and all of that stuff. So just find you a hotel that says free Wi-Fi, free parking, free... Um, the, the only thing they add tax on is the dollar amount. But if you use Hotel.com, they'll go ahead and calculate how much the hotel will be. And then you just decide if you want to do that or not. Um, the best hotel that I stayed in came from Hotel.com. And I also used the where I just went to another city. And I didn't use Hotel.com and I spent a whole bunch of money. So, when I decide to go out of town, take trips like I used to, I'm always going to revert back to Hotel.com. So, you can use it or you don't. Whichever one you use, Hotel.com is the one that I use. It works for me. And I want to say everything that works for me probably won't work for you guys. But, um, it's just up to what your budget is. And when I go out of town, I don't like spending that much money. So, that's the reason why I use that. <coughs> you can always sign up. And you know, everywhere you go, they give you these little, these little business cards. On these business cards, it says, 
um, go to this website and sign up for a newsletter. You guys, if you sign up for one of those travel newsletters, those help you find the deals. Um, that also keeps your pocket full. So, sometimes you might get a card that says, well, on this day we're giving away, you buy a hotel room with 50% off. But, it's a certain amount of people that have to stay there. Then, that is a budget. Um, also, you'll have where they're probably giving away free meals. That's one less meal you have to pay for. Just pay close attention and be mindful of certain things you want to do while you're away on trip. Or away on vacation. And then, just watch your emails. Watch, uh... Especially the spam folder. I know most of you guys don't watch the spam folder because it's a spam. But you can always check for like deals. And the best one that I use is Hotels.com and Groupon. And I know most of you guys really don't like Groupon like that because you have to be careful what you get off of Groupon. Which is true. But at the same time, I use Groupon faithfully. Um, So yeah. Another thing I want to mention to you guys is BYOB. Um, most of you guys probably heard BYOD, which is bring your own device. Um, but I came up with BYOB, meaning to bring your own beers or alcohol or whatever you depend on drinking. Bring your own. Stay away from the mini bars. Mini bars is like fifteen dollars for a little small. Probably a little less than a four ounce bottle of wine or whiskey or anything like that. So stay away from these mini bars. Um, which also brings me to drinking responsibly. Because you know when you drink a lot, you want to buy more. When you buy more, you lose money from your pockets. So be mindful of that, of course. Um, also, use your locals. If you're going to a town, let's say you're from Mississippi like I am, and you're going to, let's say, Georgia, I always talk to the people in that town and see what's the best thing you could do while you're there. Also, it won't, it won't hurt to ask the prices, but I always ask for advice. Um... Even though most of you guys probably don't agree with me, but sometimes it's best to stay away from these these little tourist people that like show you around the city because they can become expensive. So be mindful of that. Always use your locals. Um and then when it comes to restaurants, um of course you could probably get breakfast at the hotel. And you can always get breakfast, uh, I mean, you can always get dinner at the hotel. But if you want to go out and get something to eat, always focus on lunch. Lunch is where you want to get your biggest portion of food. So when it comes to dinner, you probably just go out for dessert or you probably just go out to fairs and stuff. You won't have to have that much money to splurge on when it comes to dinner because you ate a big lunch already so just be mindful of that but if you don't eat lunch and you skip all that just eat a big breakfast sometimes you have to find a hotel that give out complimentary breakfast i think and then yeah and it's usually cheaper and i did forget when it comes to vehicles it's always good to either rent your vehicle because you really don't want to put wear and tear on yours. So rent your vehicle and also I used to use this website before I found another website that I haven't really used yet. So I'm not going to mention that website because I haven't used it yet. But I will use it on the 20th to get to the airport. So, with this one, I have used it, ooh, a lot. Probably four or five times. And they probably don't shut this website down, if I'm not mistaken. But, before I add it into the comment, I mean, the description box, I'm going to check it out first. Um, But, they probably have uh closed down this website. Because, I know one time I looked on it, they didn't have any cars available. So maybe it was just a bad day 
and they just used all their cars or something. But this website is called autoslash.com. A U T O S L A S H dot com. And like I said, I'm going to link it below. Before I link it below, I'm going to go ahead and check it out for you guys just to make sure it still works. Because I don't want to give you guys a website and it don't work anymore. Um. Also, when it comes to spending money, it's I feel like people should have three um, bank accounts. You should have one for just like bills and all of that good stuff. Then you should also have where you have leeway to where you saving and, and all that good stuff. But then you should have one that's just for vacation. Um, like for a spare change that you don't use. It should be put in your vacation, um, your vacation account. And I have, I have four bank accounts. And you guys, I get them confused sometimes. But then I start writing it down, like which card I need to use for what. And also, um, me having so many bank accounts sometimes is great. Because sometimes I feel like I need four bank accounts just in case I feel like I don't have any money. So let me tell you guys this. I have four bank accounts. For one, it, it takes out like bills and all of that stuff. And then the second one is just mainly savings. Um, I do not touch that bank account at no cost. Um, I even locked it up at the bank so I can't use that card. Um, and then the other one is, like, for vacations. Um, and I use that, uh, I want to say every three months. I used to use it every three months. And then I got one to where I use it as for, like, groceries and any kind of insurance. That's basically what I use that one for. So I have four bank accounts. Somebody, some people have five and six, but I only stuck to four. But I think after when the new gear comes in, I'm going to break it down to two. And then uh, we'll see how that works. Um, so I think sometimes it's better to have, either way you go, it's better to have a bank account. This is mainly for traveling expenses. Um, try to find one that uh, gives you like unlimited ATM withdrawals. Um, one that would not charge you um unnecessary fees like maintenance fees i never understood that maintenance fee what is you going into my bank account fixing exactly so um i also had to cut off a bank because of that and i'm gonna give you guys a story time on that hopefully about that probably before i leave i'm gonna tell you guys about that situation um also, some of you guys might let, like traveling on planes. Um, I always avoid the peak days, meaning, meaning uh, the peak days will be spring break, Christmas, Thanksgiving, July, summer family reunions. It's usually between May and August. So just be mindful of those. And then uh, sometimes you have to be mindful of New Year's Eve too. Because it can be very hectic. Um, also, buy less stuff. Because if you're traveling on the, plane, on the plane, the more you buy, the more you have to pay when it's becoming time for you to weigh your baggage. So, be careful of that. Um, also, if you go with somebody, uh, let's say you go with a couple of friends... Don't always be the one to put out for the vacations. You can always split the vacation. Remember that. You can always split the vacation. And always go with someone that's willing to split the vacation with you. If you go with somebody and they don't want to split the vacation with you, then maybe that's not the person you need to go with. Um, always go with a family member or go with a best friend. And we always split the cost of our trip um or we just decide who's paying for what and all of that 
Um, we probably had one person that just paying for the gas. We had one person just paying for the food. We had one person that paying for the room. We had one person to pay for when we actually decide to uh get a car. We have uh one person that's this that's going to be responsible for packing up the car. We just split all the responsibilities between however many is going. Uh, and we make it clear of who's doing what before we leave this driveway. Now, I'm going to tell you guys about this rule that I use when it comes to my everyday life beside of traveling. And it works miracle. The only thing is, when it's come to this rule, I don't really stick to it per se. Because I'm going to tell you guys which part I don't stick to. And you guys can decide if you want to stick to it or not. And if you guys notice, I'm trying to make this video below 20 minutes. And we are already at 15 minutes. So let's get into this budget rule. Okay, if you go to Google, you can look up this 50-20-30 rule. And this rule is basically to help people reach financial goals. Um... This rule basically states you should spend up to 50% of your after-tax income of needs. So, when you get your check, and it shows how much taxes is taken out, and then it has how much your check is after the taxes, this is basically what it's talking about. Take 50% of that, and it will be like your essential things you need, like housing, utilities, groceries, transportation, all of that would consider 50% of whatever you need. Okay. And then you need an obligation that you must have to do or um, as part of your needs too. Um, 20%, as they say, is like savings and retirement and all that stuff to help build your future. This is why I kind of disagree yet, but... We're going to go along with this rule, and I'm going to tell you guys why I disagree. And then they say 30% is basically life, lifestyle, everything you want to do. So, basically 50% of what needs to be handled. 20% is basically to focus on your future. And 30% is on what you want to do. Um, This is what I'm kind of confused at. Because 50%, I agree with what you need to get handled. But when it comes to savings and all of their retirement stuff, I put 30% back in savings and then I put 20% of what I want to do. Um, Because I don't see why we have to spend 30% of our check just to go out and do something we want to do. I feel like 30% should be part of your savings and 20% should be part of your lifestyle. And I think either at the beginning of this video or at the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to put in a picture of this wheel of what they showing you guys. What should, should be spent um, in 50%, what should be spent in 20%, what should be spent in 30%. I'm also going to link a website below that could basically help you guys. And the name of this website is get.spendy.com. And it's a great website because I use it faithfully. So, yeah. I have like a couple of websites I want you guys to go visit. So, hopefully, it will help you out with your traveling spending. It will help you out when it comes to bills. It will help you out when it comes to your savings and all of that good stuff. But you still can have fun while on a budget. That's basically what I'm trying to hint at. In this video, I want you guys to understand, you can have fun all you want to, but you still can stay on budget. So, I hope this video helped you guys. I'm going to go ahead and put this video up before I go to work. And I hope you guys have had a great day. I hope this storm have not ruined your day. Um, But remember to be blessed, stay blessed, and go out and bless someone else. And if you guys want any more of these videos, just let me know in the comment section below. And I will not forget to um, link these uh, websites below for you guys. But I'm going to check them out to make sure they're still working. And then I'll be back with you guys probably tomorrow. Because tomorrow is Wednesday, so I'm like three videos behind for you guys. But... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these videos off for you guys. And I hope you guys have a blessed, blessed day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Be blessed, guys.